just some little light shopping and yeah just kind of explored the city really what is light shopping for a chase and j miles is it <laughs> do we want to really get into that <laughs> i mean is it is it is it like a new car or something like every time i see your instagram it's like a new car what's up everybody uh welcome back to another episode of road to Ten Thousand. I'm always with uh, my guy Juan, and today we're with Chasten J. Miles. What's up, dude? What's up, Ricky? It's been so long. It has been a while, bro. It has been a while. We both got different haircuts. I know. Oh, oh yeah. The last time you saw me, I think my hair was short. Like, like yeah, 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 yeah. We yeah. just flipped it. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> yeah, man. Good to see you. Good to see you, man. I took a little vacay last week. I went to Pensacola Beach. Oh, yeah. How was that? It was good. Maybe like four weeks ago, maybe a month ago, I like mm -hmm. felt really burnt out. Yeah. And I was like, like for once, I was like, man, I've been working really hard <laughs> and like really going hard. Yeah. I was like, oh, OK, I'm human. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I was like, all right, I'm going to take I'm going to take some little time. And so I went with the family down to uh, Pensacola Beach, which is just an hour away. And it felt really good, man. I feel real reju very rejuvenated and stuff. But like the last day I was there, Saturday, our checkout day, I get sick, S more sick than I've ever been in the last 10 years. Really? Yeah. What'd you get? Yeah, I, I was I was throwing up. I couldn't get out of the bed. I had body chills, like aches, like hurting. Like I was down for the count. And I was I, mean, like, I was thinking just like stomach bug, you know? So like that day was the day we're checking out. So Carlin has to pack up by herself with the kid in her hand you know like she's holding whitley and she's like packing up by herself luckily it was just an hour away so like i'm just like roughing it on the way home and then i get home lay in bed the rest of the day yesterday sunday i was able to get up and walk around and stuff you know like wasn't as bad still woozy today i woke up and i felt 100 i wake up 4 30 go to the gym crushing it ready to get after it first day back from vacation like let's crush it then Carlin started feeling a little woozy. And then I started feeling woozy again. I was like, okay, I'm going to get tested, like tested, tested. So I went down there and got tested and uh, negative like for COVID. So I was like, okay, stomach bug. But I tell you, dude, I'm telling you right now, bro. No, I have not been like that in a decade. So I bet you, you were thinking literally like the first vacation I take. And then this is what happens. Your mind probably all automatically went to, you know, what's what's going on i just don't want to say the word you know i'm not trying to mess up any type of flows or monetization or anything like that but you know what we squeezed every little drop of that vacation that we could like it was kind of cold it wasn't really like a beach weather kind of trip we we're on the beach but we had we enjoyed it so much man went to the went to the zoo one day when it warmed up a little bit we did go to the beach for a second one day when it warmed up we just like like chilled out like yeah. really chilled out for a second I was still handing on a few DMs and emails and stuff and deals happening, but that was the first time in a long time, man, like during working hours that I actually didn't work. You know, I was actually like doing something with the family. It was great. When's the last time you've been on vacation? Um, this past weekend, actually. Well, <laughs> <laughs> well I, I did a little, um, I went up to Chicago, you know, just to hang out for a few days. It was my, my birthday this past week. Oh, so, yeah, and so I just we got a birthday out. boy in the house. I know. <laughs> you know what that means, right? No, I don't. But it's, yeah. No, we have nothing for you, man. Which oh, okay, one was okay. it? <laughs> um, my happy birthday happy birthday! Actually, you know it's for me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, my birthday was actually Friday, and so I was out there from Thursday to Sunday, and then got back in and and hit it early this morning. Okay, so, how old were you? Turned thirty-two. 32. Um, How old are you on? I'm 27. Okay. Do y'all know each other? No, this is the first time we're connecting. Have you ever heard of Juan, Chasten? I have not. Okay. Yeah, Juan, Juan is my guy, man. He is he is my guy. Like uh we're basically we go to war with each other, you know what I'm saying? Like this is a dude I'm going to be in a foxhole with, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's so, all. That's all. Rick, Ricky's the general and I, and I'm running the tank behind them. There That's you go. Like that. That's awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. So what did you do in Chicago? Like what is what is what does a Chase and J Miles do <laughs> in a Chicago on his birthday? 
you know, and I'm so used to going on like beach vacations and places that I've never been before. But all the past times that I've been to Chicago, I've only been for for work because, you know, I used to do a lot with National Association of Realtors and YPN and all that. So since their headquarters are up there, I would always go up there for stuff. But I never got a chance to actually go out and see the city and visit those touristy places. So this time um, I actually visited the Bean um, thing. And so yeah. that was cool to see that. I, I took a, a tour boat down the river. So I took this architecture tour, which was amazing because it was just pointing out like the different buildings and the different styles of architecture. Learned a lot about commercial architecture with that. Ate some really good food the whole time. And um, I know, oh, went, went to an art gallery. And so, yeah, did did some little light shopping and yeah, just kind of explored the city really. What is light shopping for a Chase and J Miles? Is it- <laughs> Do we want to really get into that? <laughs> I mean, is it is it is it like a new car or something? Like every time I see your Instagram, it's like a new car. Yeah, no, like I I, I love cars and I get bored with things quickly. So, um, but I will say, you know, with, with my cars, I always make good investments and. In, in, and cars that'll do smart things. So, Ch- um, Chase, then if if yeah. you had a hundred million dollars to spend on a car and there's no money left over, you can pick any car in the, in the world you want. What, what are you going with? I'll probably go with a Bugatti, a, um, a Sport, a Veyron, um, Chiron. Oh, okay. So you've thought about this. <laughs> he has looked this up, dude. He's done some research. <laughs> He's looked up the customer reviews. Have you have you ever driven drove one? No, I haven't. No, okay. man, I'm, I'm I'm a little scared to get behind the wheel right now. <laughs> I got I got to wait a little while, but I don't get I don't get behind the wheel of anything I can't afford because I'm a little clumsy. <laughs> so, what do those run? I I got a little. Uh, let's check this out. Three million. I, I, Three I, have, I have a million. Yeah, I have a feeling he wants the uh, the six million dollar one. There's a there's a specific <laughs> model, right? <laughs> wow. Three million dollars. No, nah, nah. I'll be honest with you, bro. I didn't really even realize there was a three million dollar car out there. Absolutely. Yeah. Which quick disclaimer, y'all, I would never buy that car. Like never <laughs> if I had the money. I'm just <laughs> but we can all just have a little dream moment right here, but nah. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't actually buy something like that. Yeah. So for everybody uh, listening to this, if you don't know who Chased and J Miles, do you even do you even have a middle initial anymore? Am no, I yeah, am I, I out of place here? Initial. Yeah. No, I still I still rock. You it. Still rock it. Okay. Yeah. I didn't see it in your little your Zoom name there. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Chased and J Miles. He is a fellow real estate entrepreneur, YouTuber, author, speaker, real estate agent. Runs a team in Dallas expanding all over the world. And uh, yeah, it's just been cool to watch Chasen's growth because when I started YouTube, you had like three or 4,000 subs. I think it's been kind of a a cool little back and forth. I think I've had more subs than you for a second. And then you came back. I think you got more than me now. Have you hit 60,000 yet? No, I I think I'm like 1,200 away or so. Yeah. Yeah, fixing to hit 60K. So that's his Instagram, by the way. Oh, here we, we got go. the bean. Look at that bean. There we go. <laughs> it's almost like, is that what inspired the haircut? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. That, speaking that, of, go ahead. Yeah, speaking of bean, man, they used to call me Mr. Bean in, in like college for like football. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like they like, and, and like they just narrowed it down to just bean. You know, and like wait, wait, like like you looked like Mr. Bean, or yeah, that's what, yeah, yeah, like that's what they said. Look like Mr. Bean, <laughs> and um, yeah, no, no, and uh, and like it got so bad that even the coaches, even my coaches, like when I did something wrong on the field, they would be like, "Bean, you know, oh. get over here, you know, like give me 20. Um, they were yelling the word "Bean" across the uh across the field at me when Rick, I did Ricky, wrong p- stuff. put a number on Mr. Bean's net worth. Mr. Bean's net worth. Hmm. Hold on. Hold on. I guarantee you're off. Um, let's see. 10 mil, 20 mil. Check this out. 150 mil. But he, he did a bunch of other movies and stuff. Yeah, though, right? no, he's he, he's a genius. He's like yeah. a comedic genius over yeah. there in London. Yeah. Yeah, he went all the way. He went all the That's way. I, I think I can beat him, though, as far as that net worth goes. But um, 
Yeah, but back back to what I was saying, man. Anybody who doesn't know Chase and J Miles, uh, this is my guy. Met him in Dallas at an event. Uh, what was the name of that event? That event, um, WGR. Style. WGR, yeah, with with Colton. That, that was a good event. Yeah, it was fun. Yeah, I, 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 how, like, how on a scale of one to ten, how excited are you are you to get back on the scene and start speaking and going to events and doing real live, like, you know, five hundred agent, thousand agent, two thousand agent events. I am. I'm, I'm off the charts, man. I've, I've been needing to, to just be out in front of people. And, you know, I, I know everybody's going to be excited about getting out to events and stuff. So I'm expecting, you know, once things do open up, I'm expecting bigger crowds out at events, hopefully, um, you know, people are ready to get out there, shake hands, and um, gain knowledge, all that good stuff. I think it's going to explode so much when we finally do open up to do events or such a pent up demand of people who want to go to those things and network with people in person. I think uh, whatever size venues we were renting out before COVID, we're going to have to get much larger, <laughs> larger spaces to hold the, uh, to hold the audiences. Um, I'm excited. I'm real excited. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's as soon as we get the go ahead, the green light. I've got I've got a tour like planned out. Like I've got my like I've got it all worked out. I'm ready to roll. I got yeah, everything I was set up. Ask you that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've got everything in place. Nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm ready to get after it, bro. I've got I've got all all over the southeast planned out. And then, uh, you know, once I get to that point where I go, you know, travel the southeast and knock all that out then uh you know i'll i'll have plenty of time to plan the rest of the country so well, have you heard our news over here we're we're set to open up completely this wednesday so really yeah texas um the governor last week he said that this upcoming wednesday where everything's open 100 percent, even clubs bars yeah everything, everything. wow um, there's no more mask mandates um yeah, it's it's going down. <laughs> literally, literally. Yeah. Huh. Well, hey, you know, whatever. You know what I'm saying? Whatever. I mean, um, you know. Yeah, I I'm, think that they're just using it as a test here to, you know, and maybe we're the guinea pigs to, to see if it can actually be pulled off and, um, you know, if everything will still stay steady or slowing down and, um, then, you know, if it's successful here, it'll probably start happening in, in other places, but I guess why not tackle the biggest state or see what happens, you know, have they opened up vaccinations for like people under 65 there? Oh yeah. Vaccinations are, are happening a lot. So, um, I mean, even like at the CVS is now like for all ages for just anybody. So what they're doing is they're saying that if you have like some type of medical condition, um, right. but, but the criteria is, is like very low. I mean, high blood pressure and, and just like anything that a lot of people have you right. can, you can get vaccinated. So it's not too strict. And they're yeah. supposed to do like another big rollout where they, they are going to, you know, open up stadiums and stuff to, so you can just drive through them and all that kind of stuff nice nice well hey it makes sense man you know i mean it's it's i don't know if the timing is perfect but when is it going to be a perfect time you know i mean you got to open up sometime yeah exactly cool so i seen on your instagram like y'all y'all are y'all like pre-selling like pre-sale closets for like 500 g's now closets yeah just closets like a bedroom closet uh, <laughs> our market out here man it's so crazy right now like it's it's insane um i literally don't even feel like there is a market value to anything anymore and some of these listings that have been going up have been at crazy prices and i think that people are just putting stuff up just to see if they get it and they've been getting it and and above it so yeah, I put that tweet out the other day that pretty soon all you'll be able to afford is a closet here for half a million dollars, you know, because that literally seems like where it's going. It's 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 insane. 
do y'all do you guys have like zero inventory um like literally like zero months of inventory 15 buyers for every every listing kind of deal all that all that so um a lot of people are trying to trying to go the new build route and that's not even working out anymore because our builders backlogs are so long i mean typically it would take six to eight months to get a home built now they're telling you a year plus um wait lists of 40 to 50 people on all of these sites and you know i mean you were you were here in texas there's there's a lot of room here there is a lot of room and all these communities are popping up and they're they're even having huge long wait lists and so it's to the point where people are just trying to get what they can get and i mean putting down insane amounts of money to to try to get their offer one and and yeah there's there's no inventory it it kind of sucks but it's it's the reality that we're living in here is your is your like is your team sales down this year because of lack of inventory no, I wouldn't say that they were down. Um, we're still trending to last year down, meaning maybe down slightly. But I will say that the price points have gone up just mm-hmm. because um, we, we made the decision to kind of focus on people who were actually able to, to work in this market. And unfortunately for some people, you know, this has kind of led our, our efforts to people with large amounts of cash because, I mean, you're having to put these offers over by upwards of fifty to a hundred thousand dollars, and you and I know not everybody has that just laying around. And so the price points has definitely gone up. Our average price point before was around like one seventy to two thirty. Now we're we're about four twenty five or so, and that's just from year over year. God, so, yeah, I know. Um, and, and so it's, it's taken us to focus with the different clientele and, and help out people who could actually compete in this market. And that was a tough decision. It, it really came down to making sure that as we're having consultations with people that we're setting the right expectations and, and not just expectations of, oh, we have to be quick about things, but Hey, I mean, if you're on down payment assistance or you're you're basically like using all of your money in your account to do the bare minimum, then this isn't this isn't the market for you because I wouldn't want to set you up for the disappointment of feeling like none of your offers are getting accepted, especially when I know that we're competing against big cash buyers, especially at that 200 and below price point. It's, it's kind of a wash for people who are trying to get financed. Um, because the cash buyers have come scooping that that stuff up just like nobody's business. So, you know, we just had to really change our change our methods a little bit. Yeah, dude. Yeah, it's 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 an insane market. It reminds me of like two thousand three and four when the market doubled overnight. Um, yeah. So, I mean, do you do you feel like there's like a? I feel like there's this pent up demand the other way right now, right? I think that there's a lot of sellers that are sitting on like normally we have a lot of buyers on the sideline, right? That are like it's pent up and like you know that, you know, since there's less transactions that there's, you know, like when the pandemic hit, for example, and transactions went down and then it exploded when they kind of reopened, quote unquote, the economy. Yeah. Um, it was pent up demand, right? I feel like there's pent up demand on the other side right now, like sellers. I think sellers that are sitting there saying, Wow, we could get a lot of money for our house right now, but I don't want to sell because there's nothing to buy. And I want to time the market. I don't want to sell now because it's going to, if it keeps going up, I'm leaving money on the table. But at some point we're going to see the tide turn a little. And uh, I think we're going to see just the market flood with sellers trying to take event. Once they realize that we're at the top or near the top, if some, there's going to be some sign, whether it's interest rates coming up or, you know, some sign of the buyers starting to slow down for some reason, and sellers are going to say, okay, we better get it now before the bubble burst or before, you know, this is it. This is as much as we're going to get. And I think we're going to see a real flood of listings from sellers who are sitting there that want to sell right now. They want to sell right now, but they're scared to leave money on the table and they don't know what they're going to rebuy. Do you feel, do you feel that? Yeah. And like I tell people all the time, it's like, 
how do we know when the market's going down or when we're in a down market? Like you don't know until it starts going down. Right. And, and so even on the seller side, yeah, a lot of sellers have that fear. But I think that this reality is setting in on on how the market is and what it's doing. And even a lot of sellers are choosing to do things differently than historically they would. Like we have sellers who are sitting here renting long term Airbnbs. Like I'm talking three month Airbnbs, you know, until they find something. I have a lot of clients getting um, selling their, their home and, and selling their home for great money can buy something, you know, any day of the week. And they're choosing to, to just rent and wait it out because the money that they, they've made, they're not thinking of it as, as a loss. They're like, oh, I'm throwing money away. They're just waiting on that on that right time. Um, you know, doing things like how we normally do with lease backs and, and all of that stuff it's been quite difficult for that. So a lot of them who do want to sell haven't really had a choice but to, you know, rent somewhere or move in with friends and family or, you know, or, or just stay put because a lot of the conveniences that were there before, it's not really working like that these days. Um, I do see a lot of homes coming on the market, like even daily, but just, just as quick as they're coming on, they're, they're going. And so, you know, I'm interested in, in watching when that is going to flip to where homes are actually staying on the market and, and inventory is lasting longer than a week. Um, I don't know necessarily when that is, because like I said, even right now, yeah, more and more sellers are coming out of the box, which is to be expected. I mean, we're hitting into this, this spring and summer market, so it's to be expected, but it's it's not to that point where the glass is getting full yet. Like it's it's not even you know, getting the quarter. It's going to take a lot, dude, it's going to take a lot to swing the pendulum the other way. It's so far, it's so far this way, but you know, like, like it can only go, it can only swing so far though. Yeah. You know, I mean, it can only swing so far and then it's going to, it's gravity, right? <laughs> Once it goes that far, it's going to start swinging the other way. What you got there, Juan? looks like you're so, trying to well, tell um, us something. Yeah. If we look up the uh, demand, uh, as far as how much inventory we've had over the last couple of years, we, we've been averaging steady since 2015, about a million houses a year. This is but national at, stats. This is national. But if you look at this from 2021, there's less than half a million. So we're down more than 50% as far as inventory goes. And yeah, it just pent up demand like crazy. Um, I don't think the pandemic has everything to do with it. But yeah, there's a lot of factors happening where 500,000 homes listed for sale nationally. Like that's unimaginable. We're, we're in a boom, man. Like I've been saying this, you know, for a minute, like we're in a, like 2021 is going to be like, I, I think we're like in really like almost like the beginning stages of like a really massive boom, you know, real estate boom. I don't think it were, and then you know, like bubble and then burst, but like the fundamentals of it right now are so strong. Like their, their lending restrictions are so high. You know, people that are buying the houses are buying them to move there and live there. They're not buying them to flip the houses. Are you guys seeing a lot of flips, Chasen, in Dallas? Um, not so much right now. I mean, we've historically always had a, a strong flip market. Um, but what we're seeing more is is what you just referenced to, like people buying them and holding on to them a little while. Um, people who would commonly invest in properties to flip them, our market, is, our values are, are just way too high right now. Like they're yeah. not getting those deals that that they were once getting, and then price of lumber, all that kind of stuff. It, I mean, it's it's all being affected, even on the builder side, to where it doesn't make as much sense right now. Now, those people who were holding properties um, and maybe had renters in there, I've been seeing a lot of renters getting notices that their landlords want to sell. And, you know, like that's the move that they're trying to make. So investors are looking for properties as much as possible right now. I get a ton of emails every single day, but I'm just like, I haven't had anything worth it come across my desk that, you know, somebody no, that's what i'm saying you know like like most of our buyers are end users right now you yeah. know and until we see speculation going on at a really high rate there's really not a bubble because everybody that's buying right now is literally buying for long term 
It's like, unless something happens with their income that makes it to where they can't afford what they felt like they could afford. That's the only thing that could be a possible bubble. It's not like a bubble in prices based on like mindset of the buyers. It could be, there could be a bubble. If there's a bubble in the economy that we're not seeing, like I don't see it like other, like there's always people that think there's a bubble, you know, like I don't see a bubble per se in terms of like income for, you know, average income for households or, you know, prices of properties, so on and so forth. Even I like, even, I even think the stock market is not overpriced right this second. Of course, it's come down a lot in the last week or so, which has been nice. Um, yeah, no, no. I, I think we're in the beginning stages of this, whereas uh, we're going to see it go to these places that uh, is going to be unimaginable right now because we think it's crazy right now. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right. Wait till you see what happens next. I think like, we'll, we'll see time will tell. The cool thing is I win either way. I don't <laughs> care if it crashes, burns, goes great. Like goes to the moon. It doesn't, I don't care what it does. I'm going to help people buy and sell properties, you know? Yep. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm, I'm something that's crazy to think about though, you know, is how for the last year we've been in this situation where people's incomes have been cut or maybe even taken away. Um, people haven't been working and we've been in this, in this situation where people haven't been living their normal lives and even making the amount of money that, that they would normally make. And as specifically even here in Texas, as we're moving into this reopening everything and things getting back to normal as soon as two days from now, you know, I'm going to be interested in seeing once people get back to those levels, what happens in this market, like where that demand goes, um, because even on the lending side, like you mentioned earlier, the lending has gotten a little bit stricter. They've taken away some of those programs and stuff. And this is what's still happening. You know, this is what's still happening in this market. So just imagine at, as we do move back to that state of normalcy, like, yeah, you're talking about the market going crazy i I'm, I'm looking forward to that day just to just to even watch and see what happens that's a good point dude and listen you don't have to wait anymore bro okay we are there bro i was i read a thing this morning that said that uh that said that the the uh the sell to list price ratio okay the, the price that properties sell for compared to the listing price. Now listen to this. Um, like this month, okay, this month it, it was, uh, it rose to like 90, hold on a second. It's, it was something crazy. Um, let's see. You got to see this. Um, Basically, it was saying that it's 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 at an all time high, okay. And this is like a national average. I don't know if my 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 computer's acting up. That's why I was late to the Zoom. Basically, in a nutshell, it rose to like ninety. I don't want to quote it, like what it rose mm -hmm. to. I think it was like ninety eight or ninety seven or something like that percent. But in, in like. But the la in the last like week of that, which is like the last week of February, it actually hit 99.1, I believe was the number that it hit. 99.1. Oh, this is a national average. Okay. Yeah. Like, like, and it like shot up to the 99.1 in that last week. We're literally on the brink of the highest uh, sales price to listing ratio that we've ever seen. Um, that's crazy. And also the highest average house the yeah. the average price of a house in, in the U S right now, according to this article I read, which is like through Inman, like information from Redfin was uh $323,000, which is an all time high. It says, okay. All time high. Okay. Average house in the U S all time high you know, sales price to listing ratio. Um, it's crazy, bro. It's crazy out there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, cool, man. I, uh, 
it's always cool jamming with you about the marketing and stuff. I love to always to hear your perspective on stuff because you're like so deep into it. Let's see. Here we go. Here we go. So it was, uh, it actually hit. Oh, okay. Check this out. Okay. Um, the average sell to list price ratio rose 1.6% year over year to an all time high of 99.6%. Okay. That was for the, uh, during the four week period of, uh, of February. All right. During the seven day period ending February, that ratio jumped to a 99.9, 99.9. Let me show you this. All right. Can you see this? Yeah. So like the gray line, the gray line is a 19 is, is 2019. Okay. This is, this is the sales price to listing price ratio. So it was like 97%. It got up to 98% and then back down under 98% in 2019. And 2020 started out the same place. It got up higher, then it came back down. Then it, then it really went up and got into the 99s, came down a little bit, and then look what it did in 2021, right? Started out above 99 and then right here, bro, in that last week of February, just a yeah. rocket ship. Boom, 99.9. That's never happened before. That's never happened before. Now, now, Chase, in a, in a market that's so high, right? And you have people always trying to save the most amount of money in their pocket. What's your value proposition for a sell by owner that could quote this and say like, hey, I could just stick my house up. I got an evaluation from a local realtor. What are you guys going to do to add value? I could just sell it on my own. Like, What's your unique value proposition in your market? Yeah, I mean, it's it's the same that it's always been um, because just because we're in a hot market doesn't mean it's different contracts, different process, different ways of doing things. You still need um, that that expert there. You still need that person with the databases where where I, where I find a lot of for sale by owners going the wrong way or messing up is thinking that just putting their home on one website is, is what's going to get it sold or just putting that sign in the yard is what's going to get it sold. Um, a lot of people are affected right now in this industry, meaning a lot of our key people that we do transactions with, title companies, attorneys, um, appraisers, and inspectors, things like that. And I know for a fact that I've been able to make calls personally to some of my contacts in the industry and get stuff done quicker than somebody just randomly calling them that they've never done business with, that they that they don't know. I mean, even to the point where getting an appraiser in somewhere super quick when they have these backlogs, you know, like that's valuable in itself. Um, even to get a property sold is, is a big reason why a for sale by owner would need someone like myself or, or like Ricky, you know, who, who's been in the business and knows how to navigate things like this. Now, it, when it comes to competition, right? Because I'm assuming there's only so many listings in your local market, right? And you guys are all fighting to just get these sellers. What are you doing to uh, generate sellers before another realtor gets a hold of them? Yeah, I mean, we just got to stick true to our, to our scripts, to our um, closing techniques um speed to lead on, on on the phone calls making sure that we are getting on, on on the calls quickly and yeah we know that they're talking to a lot of agents we know a lot of agents are calling but there's an insane amount of agents out here who are thinking that they can just hop into the business and ride this train and that that they're going to make all this quick and fast money and they're doing a horrible job at it. like they're doing a horrible job and that's been really evident to a lot of the expired listings and, and for sale by owners these days, because simply even in our appointment, like us showing them what true real marketing looks like compared to what their agent put up there and why their home didn't sell in this hot market, in this market where all these properties are getting 50 offers, you know, what the problem was or why their stuff keeps falling out. It's, it's been making our job a little easier, but, but yeah, there's, there's a lot of agents out here working. Um, our big thing is consistency and follow up. So making sure that, hey, even if you didn't get that appointment on, on the first try, continue to follow up, continue to follow up because agents are, are going to forget to do that. You know, agents don't follow up the way that they should. If they didn't get the first time, then they're going to give up. No, we're still going to hit them on that six, seven, eight time. 
Um, one thing that we are doing is we're going back to old expired and old canceled. So from last year, back when the pandemic first hit, going going back to those and seeing where they're at in, in their process, if they came back on the market, if they had a change of plan. So we've been getting really good traction with those. Cool. And, old expireds. Mm -hmm. Cool, cool, cool. You've been watching my videos. Oh no, I missed it. What, what <laughs> have you have you been talking about that? <laughs> I'm just messing with you, man. Okay. Now nah, I've been preaching the old expired thing for a minute, man. It's gold. Okay. It's yep. gold. Yeah. It's gold, I mean, bro. Those are those are how I got my first listing. My my strategy was old expires, and I looked for the ones that were were vacant. Um, mm. and and those were the ones that I would that I would call. Um, but yeah, you know, we, we, we have a pretty strong foundation here. So, um, a lot of the competition that we're, we're up against, yeah, we're, we're up against the big guys and it's, it's just about using our personality to, to really shine in these appointments. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hope everybody really pays attention to what you said there. Personality, man. Cause everybody's like, how do I stand out and how do I compete against all these other agents or these experienced agents and stuff? And it's like, they want you for you. <laughs> like it's not about how many you sold or, you know, you know, this or that or experience. It really comes down to, they just like you as a person. Yeah. Like they just want to do business with people they like. That's really what it comes down to. And the experienced people know that and they know, they know how to make people feel comfortable with them, you know, to a point that they want to do business with them. The new people, I think they just are nervous and so it makes them seem like they don't know what they're doing, even though real estate's real simple, you know, they just, there's this unknown and people are just, it's not the fact that they're new. It's the fact that they, it's the fact that they, their tone is new. <laughs> they, they, they got that new agent smell. Like, you know, they're new. <laughs> yeah. So and before we get off, man, before we get off, I wanted to, uh, I want to hear about your team. Like, like what is your team? Like, okay, you got a local team in Dallas, right? And then you got your EXP team, like local, uh, nationally, globally, all that stuff. Like, I just want to hear how it's all set up. Like you have your team locally and then like, is it two separate things when you, when, you know, for the expansion and like, how does it all work? Yeah, sure. So, so the expansion is separate from my, my local team here. The, the expansion is more of the EXP side of things and, and growing out my, my network there. And, and it's, it's expanded quite a bit. Um, as far as the, the local team, we've done a little bit of expansion with that. So we're located here in Dallas and we've currently expanded out into Houston and are going to be moving into San Antonio and Austin here pretty soon. So we're so going to keep that really based on um, Texas for the most part. Um, the local team here, yeah, so it consists of agents. I got about eight agents here on the team, eight, eight or nine agents. And then I have our office manager. We have a transaction coordinator, um, marketing person, and then George, who is our sales manager. So we, we really um, work here in the, the local market, the DFW market, and then down in Houston as well. But currently on the expansion side, 101 agents um, on on that side, and so now my my biggest role with them is just being as resourceful and valuable and as valuable to them as possible, and making sure that they know how to navigate things and um, know where to go to get something and um, lay that foundation for for a real long lasting real estate business instead of just trying to worry about generating a Facebook lead. Um, so that's, that's been my focus with that. That's genius, bro. That's genius. I'm doing it the same way. I'm still, of course, I don't have a local team. I'm just a single agent guy. I know everybody like cringes when I say that, but, um, I'm just a single agent guy. And, uh, and then the expansion part is a separate deal. This is our, this podcast is called road to 10,000, man, for a reason. This is our little journey to 10,000 agents. Juan is part of my upline. Juan, what, what number, how, how big are we? We are at, as of this morning, 640, and I we are think. open in three, or I think three continents at this point. Is it three or four? Nice. What'd yeah. you say? Six what? 640. 
six forty. Cool, cool, cool. Awesome. And I'm in Juan's downline, so let's see. I'm at I'm at four sixty five. Look at you. I've got sixty FLQAs more than anyone in the company. Wow. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I've got 151 sponsored, 60 FLQAs. So I'm pretty excited, pretty excited. I'm just, I'm using it as a platform to help agents. It's not about, it's not even about EXP or recruiting or anything. It's just about using it as a platform the way that you're supposed to, you know, like for the greater good, you know, for, to try to help people. Um, You know, everything I do, I try to figure out how I can use it as a vehicle to help. Yep. Yep. I was telling Juan earlier, I haven't gotten too deep into it yet. Um, you know, just with all of the systems and agent attraction, it, it's, it's been a, a goal of mine and, and I'm looking to, to get more, um, get more traction going in that area. Uh, but I, I, I decided to kind of see how all this works because the whole difficult part that I was facing before was, you know, having an existing real estate business. And, and I was just like, I don't even know how to begin to focus on doing a whole different area of this business that I've never done before. Um, that I, that I wasn't really familiar with and I didn't even see how I would fit it in, you know, especially when I'm so used to doing things a certain way, but it's, it's definitely powerful and I can see, how it is helping people, you know, I, yeah, I yeah. give, I give my agents, um, you know, access to my, to my coaching and everything. And it's been miraculous to see people that, um, that, you know, started with, with nothing the same way I did and, and just tap in and, and just feed into the information and are changing their lives and, and, and helping their families in different ways. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to do more of it definitely. Yeah. Well, Jason, bro, it's always a real pleasure, man. Let me just say, and I appreciate you taking the time to, to come on the show and share your insight of the, the market down there and, and all that good stuff, man. Uh, just really appreciate it. Where can everybody find you or how can they reach out to you if they need something? Sure. Just visit my website, chastonjmiles.com. So that's C-H-A-S-T-I-N, the letter J-M-I-L-E-S.com. And, that'll and have all don't definitely do not forget the J, bro. Yeah. <laughs> don't forget the J. J Miles, bro. This dude has the fanciest name in real estate. <laughs> I appreciate it. That's my new tagline. Oh my <laughs> let's, let's, let's write that down. <laughs> yeah. Cool, guys. Thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, if you're listening to this on, pod, on a podcast somewhere or on YouTube, please like, comment, subscribe. Give us a five-star review. Reach out. Let us know what we can do to help you. Um, we are, you know, doing interviews. If anybody's interested in joining our team in any market, just reach out to me or Juan on Instagram, email, text message, any form of communication possible. Juan, you got anything? I think we're good to go. Chasten, thanks so much for the info. We're looking uh, really, really excited to see your growth and uh, keep us posted on any collaborations that we could get in on. And, and to the audience, anyone who's out there who needs more help, when it comes to scaling their business, if you're an agent that just has overall questions or uh, you really want to know what it takes to kind of get to the next level, reach out to us. Me and Ricky answer every single one of our DMs. Uh, we're always available. Cool, awesome. guys. Thank Talk to all. you guys soon. Peace.